watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. The year was 1992 and Yamaha had quite missed the Rumpler craze. So what they did was to release the SY85 and its rec version the TG500, which boasted 64 voices of polyphony, which was totally unheard of at the time. So if you want to know why this was a big deal back then and maybe still is today, please join me in this video. Here we go. The TG500 is the rack version of the SY85, so it comes without a sequencer, a keyboard or real-time controllers, but with an additional 32 voices of polyphony. It has three different operating modes, single voice, multi and performance. Single voice play is exactly what it says, a single sampled oscillator that can be run through amps and filters and effects. Multi is for playing multiple instruments at once, which are spread over multiple MIDI tracks. Performance mode is where it's at on this synth. Here you can arrange up to four single voices into one big patch, effectively reducing polyphony to 16 notes played at once, but greatly expanding its sonic possibilities. The TG500 is a one height unit rack mounted synth based on Yamaha's AWM2 synthesis, which means it's a subtractive synth that uses samples instead of oscillators. On the front we have a power button, MIDI mass LEDs, a headphone jack, the volume knob, a 24x2 LC display, a button panel for sound editing and four expansion and storage media card slots. On the back there are standard 5-pin MIDI sockets and three stereo outputs that can be used to route MIDI tracks to different audio paths. Let's listen to some single voices first.
Okay, so let's take a look at the synthesizer inside this machine. So there's voice play, there's multiplay, and there's performance play. The performance is made up from four voices. Those four voices will be triggered simultaneously while playing the keyboard. We've got this row or this panel of buttons here. You can switch between play modes using this. I've prepared a sound here to show this off to you. Let's listen to this. <laughs> So how did I do this? Press the edit button and then you can use the plus and minus buttons to switch between edit modes and there's a quick editor which you can use to quickly set up a rough sound. So press enter to go there then press page to get the sub menu of the editor and you can use the plus and minus buttons to switch through the different pages of the editor. For example you can choose a wave here press enter and then you can see we've got this this analog saw sound here and if I change this Let's uh, stick with the analog saw. Let's take a look at some other things. For example, on the amplitude page of the quick editor, if you go there, you can choose an amplitude preset, which is um, quite nice to quickly get results. So at the moment I've got my custom edited amplitude envelope, but I can choose, for example, piano. Or Swasando Brass. Yeah, let's go to the full editor and let's see what's possible here. So oscillator selection, I've already shown you that, but let's go there anyway. Press page to go to the submenus. You can select the wave here. And if you go to page once again, you can also set up some parameters. And the interesting thing here is you can enter a randomness of the pitch here. So we've got this analog sounding uh, pitch shifting that's going on in this patch. I can exaggerate this so you can hear the results. Yeah, 
this is horrible. Let's stick around two or three. I'm back at the top level of the full editor. On the next page, you can set up amp envelope and you can see you have to enter the numbers here. And so we got the slow attack and the long sustained phase and then there's a slow release. You can see this is not a simple attack, decay, sustain and release envelope, but you've got six values that the envelope can go through. Uh, you can also edit the scale so the envelope behaves differently regarding to the pitch you're playing. There's a scale offset and there's a sensitivity. So the amplitude envelope can be more pronounced if you hit the keys harder or softer. Okay, that was uh, the envelope page. Let's exit and now let's go to the next. Here's the filter setup. And as you can see, we can choose different filters here. At the moment, we've got this low pass 12 decibel filter. Here's a band pass filter. Then we've got another band pass filter. High pass filter. and low pass filter. And the low pass filter is special because this was the first digital synthesizer that uh, supported filter resonance on a digital filter. <laughs> Let's listen to this. So at the moment the resonance is pretty low. Let's go all in here. Okay, let's max it out. <laughs> it's interesting. So let's keep it at low levels. Press the page button. We've got the filter levels, obviously. So you can see um, this belongs to the filter envelope and I've entered some numbers here. So we've got this filter movement when playing. And we've got the yeah the speeds of the filter envelope. So we've got a relatively slow attack, kind of fast release and a sustain phase here. We've got scale points, offset and the filter sensitivity can react to velocity or uh, the rate level. So we've got the pitch envelope, which is quite the same as the other envelopes. Then we've got LFO. So let's check the parameters first. So LFO can have different shapes of sign wave sample and hold where saw wave up saw wave down triangle let's use the sine wave then you can adjust the depth obviously amplitude pitch and filter and uh, the sensitivity a randomness of uh, the lfo speed or you can uh, set it up so the lfo is faster the harder you hit the keys next page midi controllers so you can uh, assign different midi controllers to do different things and i've um, attached uh, my cognano control to filter resonance and filter cutoff frequency uh, there is uh, also an effects page. There are some nice sounding effects. If you consider the age of this synth, there are two different effects you can apply per patch. And I've used this delay filter. Yeah, let's uh, try to use the MIDI controllers here. Let's see how that sounds. Sorry for this lame performance, but I'm sitting behind my camera using this uh, keyboard. Okay, let's uh, also take a short look at uh, performance editing. So press the play mode until you reach the performance play mode and then press edit. Skip all the other editors, go straight to full editing and uh, then you can choose a layer and if you press the page button here, you can then select the voices that your performance uses. So this voice is made up from a square wave 
wave and slowly attacking string. If I press the page button here, you can cycle through all the other editor functions here. So we can edit the volume, which is kind of a mixer for this sound. You can also pan those sounds, shift those sounds, tune those sounds, and also set velocity and note limits. So if you want to create a keyboard split, for example, you can choose the note at which a certain sound is beginning to be played and ending. But on this sound, both sounds I chose are playing simultaneously. So let's listen to this. So let's listen to some performances and then let's wrap this video up. Oh, by the way, if you like content like this, and if you want to see more on the TG500 or SY85 on this channel in the future, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you want to support what I'm doing here financially, you can become a channel member using the button under this video or join my Patreon. Link is in this video's description. Thank you very much. Yeah, and that's it for today. The Yamaha TG500. It's still a great sounding synthesizer today. And if you found this useful or interesting, please consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, thanks for watching and see you again very, very soon. Bye bye.